Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So in this video, what I want to do is um, kind of to go a little bit more into detail of not the exact stage of Annihilation 3, but of some of the possible teams that you can use to basically help you clear Annihilation 3. I don't know why I had a bit of gas just now. Uh, basically, um, there's the main reason why I decided to make this video is because in, in the last video, I very strongly re recommended um, people raise Shiryuki and Jitano, and I, I kind of fear that I might paint the picture that, you know, the only viable strategy for Annihilation 3 is to use these two units. There's actually a lot more units and a lot more strategies that you can use to clear Annihilation 3, and Annihilation 3 actually will be out very, very soon. I think it should be out um, either at the time of recording this video, either next week or the week after. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't have like, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but based on estimates, it should be out very, very soon. And the reason why you want to clear it like as soon as possible is because Annihilation 3 actually gives you more, um, it allows you, it increases your cap of your Arundum by 100 every week. Basically, it goes up to 1,700, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it also is more efficient than doing Annihilation 2. Uh, basically, costs the same amount of energy or, or sanity, and it gives you more Arundum at the end of the run, which is why you want to be farming Annihilation 3 instead of Annihilation 2. Now, I think a lot of, um, especially for most players, kind of the problem that they'll run into, especially ones that, you know, don't don't refill and maybe started a little bit later when the, after the game first launched. Um, they they might be might not have like their units really, really high level. They might not have a lot of units at Elite Two. So I wanted to show some strategies that will allow you to use units at Elite One and maybe potentially borrow a, a friend's support unit to basically carry you through the stage. So I want to show basically four strategies. What I have here is the um, basically the Chinese YouTube, it's called Bili Bili, and it has, um, I found a few videos of people clearing Annihilation 3 with um, different teams. Now, I wanna be very clear that I actually have not played on the Chinese, ser um, Chinese server of Ark Knights. I never played the, on the CN version but I am able to read Chinese, so which is why I'm able to do all this research, right? And I want to sh kind of show, th show this to you guys. And I'll also include the links to all these videos in the description below. Um, first, to give credit to these people to, you know, because of them, I'm able to make this video and help you guys. And also for your own reference, if you want to go and check out these videos to kind of study up, right? So the first video is actually the same video I showed last time, and I, I actually just have this video up because I wanted to talk about the team that you want to have, like the general team that you want to have, and um, you know which units are optional and which units are kind of um, needed. So the first thing that's like non not optional is you need a two block vanguard. You have to have a two block vanguard to generate cost. It's the only way because in annihilation you you don't get any deployment points. So your Vanguard will be your only source of deployment points. Okay, so you will need to have a two block Vanguard. It doesn't need to be very strong, but it does need to be a Vanguard to give you deployment points. And ideally you should have this skill maxed out to give you as much deployment points as possible. It doesn't matter uh, which Vanguard you're using. The second unit that you'll need is, um, doesn't have to be a magic damage dealing guard. This can, this can be a one block guard. It could also be a two block guard if that two block block guard is higher level, and it's mainly just to, there to you know deal some melee damage. It's it's not not there for anything special, so it's not um, a very important slot. Um, the third thing, the third unit you'll need is a healing tank. It's actually quite important that um, you have a healing tank. Um, either gummy, there's only three in the game. Or there's four now with spot. But Gummy, a lot of people have. Um, it's, she's very easy to get from Recruit. If you ever get like melee healing or defender healing, um, it's it's really easy to get Gummy. Um, she's also in that like $1 pack as well, <laughs> Gummy. Um, but 
healing tanks are very very strong um, you will need them to basically help sustain your team at certain points of the game you could do with two normal tanks but i do highly recommend one of them be a healing tank um, mainly because of the you know the crossbow damage especially if your healer is only at e1 if you have like an e2 aoe healer then you might not need to use a healing tank you can use a use a normal tank you can use two normal tanks the third thing, uh, the fourth thing you'll need is a ranged two block guard. It's it's very important that it's a ranged two block guard, uh, mainly to help DPS with the drones that f that fly by, uh, because ranged two block guards are able to attack the drones, and they're also able to help DPS um, help the frontline DPS. Uh, basically, there's a lot of places where you'll you'll basically pr remove those ranged two two block guard and just deploy them in different areas of the map um, depending on the, the 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 stage of the of the map um, the fifth fifth unit you'll need is a tank um, a normal tank this is mainly to deal with the boss at the end and also just to take a lot of damage if you if you need to um, if you're planning to kill the boss before he moves and you're not t planning to take a lot of damage, your tank doesn't need to be very high level. And I think in general your tank doesn't the, the requirements for your tank aren't very high. So a four star tank um, will, will definitely be able to do the job even at E1. The this is actually very important. You will need a push unit and this push unit needs to be at E1 and has to have their skill maxed out and has to have their skill to, um, equip because you'll 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 have to use their skill too to push the heavy units um, into the hole at the bottom you'll need two healers um, one of them single target one of them aoe it's very important that you have one one healer be an aoe healer the uh, the kind of the last uh, three things you'll need is actually the three snipers and i actually left out jitano because this jitano is actually optional um, this strategy is actually using Shirayuki and Jitano to, to carry. And I'll show you in another video of like an actual Shirayuki Jitano carry. Um, but this one is like um, very, very close to that strategy. But you need your snipers to basically deal with the drones in this level. There's a lot of drones and you need strong snipers to take them down because they have a lot of health. Okay, so they're not easy to deal with. They actually um, can fly past your units if you don't have strong snipers i think the level requirements for your snipers is relatively high in this level um, both your normal snipers and your aoe sniper to to basically well the aoe sniper is mainly you want them at e2 because they get extended range at e2 so it's for utility purposes not for stat purposes but for your single target snipers you want them high high level for stat purposes and your last unit will basically be your carry unit, depending on carry unit, depending on your strategy. Um, so in this, for this strategy, it's a, it's, it's using Jitano. Okay, so we're gonna actually take a look at um, basically this, this clear, and it's using a, um, his levels, his units are much, much, much more over leveled. I'll actually show you this run where he's actually able to do it with using just E1 units. And this, this, uh, the second, the second video, that the reason why I wanted to show this video is actually this video has better, I would say better strategy because they actually use Shirayuki and Jitano to kill the boss at the very end, um, and this the the first one is not able to do it because the Shirayuki is only at E1 and not able to reach this boss over here. I actually see this like <laughs> this drone almost slips past. Like that's why it's so important to have your snipers high level because if they're not high level, like, like this drone was about to cross. Did did you see that? Like this this um the the second drone like the first drone was about to slip past. This second drone was already behind a cruise when it died. So, you know, if you don't want any weird slip ups to happen, I would actually um, very highly recommend you have your snipers at E two. Because the, the drones do have quite a lot of health. So uh, if you don't want anything crazy to happen, I think it's it's a pretty good idea. And this this first one is actually just a Jitano carry strategy. It's very simple. Um, he, he has his Jitano facing up and then tanking the boss and killing it. 
Um, it's very, very st standard. I would probably call this the, the, um, the standard, like the orthodox strategy, like this, the orthodox style or standard strategy. Basically, this is if you want to like copy anything and using like just the cookie cutter units, um, this this would probably be something that you want to do. And then the second one is a um, Jitano Shirayuki. Like, like I want to actually just show you the basically if you have your Shirayuki and Jitano at E two, kind of what they can do. So if they're at E2, they can actually kill a lot of these units like very, very quickly before they even move. And especially the boss at the end. Look at this. This is this is insane. She, she pops her skill and the two of them just kill that boss. So the first one is actually a, like this is a Jitano carry strategy and also um, like Shiaryuki is kind of there as like the you know the support basically and then everybody else you know your your normal team right so that's the that's the first strategy I I, I talked in detail about this in the last video um, about the you know the crossbows and all that stuff but the I want to also share some other strategies in in this video um, and what you can do if your units aren't very high leveled and you want to still be able to clear annihilation 3 the, the week that it launches. So this one is actually one that I very highly recommend um, people copy. If it's very, I think this one is probably the most realistic one to copy because it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. There's no crazy timings. You know, you don't have to be super big brain to, to do this. I know some of my like challenge mode clears are like extremely, extremely clutch on my four star account. <laughs> Uh, this one doesn't require any of that. Okay, this one this one is very very simple and all it really is is it, it, As you can see it's using still like only three star four star units, but it's using a ifrit to carry and They're all e1 as well So it's very simple um, the beginning is still kind of the same They kind of like you know move some units around and then at, at some point of the game He puts ifrit down <laughs> facing down from here and then she's able to attack this whole line of enemies and then you just have three enemies line up here to basically block them for ifrit and it kind of um, goes like that till the end of the stage all the way till the end it's probably out of all the strategy, this one's like probably the simplest one, but it does require you to use a six star unit that not everybody has. But the good thing is you only need that one unit for the strategy. So you can borrow a friend's Ifrit. If you have an Ifrit on your friend list, um, if you know anyone that has an Ifrit, make sure to add them as a friend and you know beg them to set their ifrit as their support unit because oh my god my legs going numb <laughs> because my <laughs> because you can actually you know if you can borrow an ifrit you should be able to do this relatively easily you just have your ifrit facing down and then um, your standard team you know very similar to before and and this one's actually using three healers because ifrit does a lot of damage by herself so it's she her her um her like normal attacks can actually hit the drones as well so she actually helps dps the drones as they're flying by so she's she's very very good in this stage um she like literally it's she's like built for this you just you can cover this entire lane over here it's really really nice so that's the that's the uh, ifrit solo carry strategy um if you have an, a friend with an ifrit definitely uh definitely ask them for help All right, so this one is, um, let me go back. This one is a Silver Ash solo carry strategy. So if you have a friend with a Silver Ash, you can see that the other units are, you know, with the exception of Neural, which you could actually use Gummy as well. Um, they're all like, you know, four star units as well. And you don't have to use a four star team. Like people just like making guides using four star teams because it kind of shows if four stars can do it, you can do it with five stars, right? Five stars, six stars. Um, this one is a Silver Ash solo carry strategy. And it's this one is 
requires you to have one E2. And the reason why you want to have an E2 is because you can only borrow an E2 Silver Ash if you have an E2 unit yourself. So you want to raise one of your units to E2 just for the purpose of borrowing Silver Ash, all right? An E2 Silver Ash. You need an E2 Silver Ash because you need his uh, True Silver Slash. And this strategy, I would say, requires a little bit more, uh, requires a little bit more brain. It, there's a lot of, uh, there's some chances to mess up, and you'll need to like basically put Silver Ash down, um, use his skills a few times, um, remove him, put him somewhere else, use his skill once, and then retreat him, and then put him somewhere else, and then use his skill again. And the reason you do this is because when you when you put down a unit, they actually have um, the majority of their SP bar near full. So you can actually use their skills faster. They're, if you're just using a unit for their special skill, you can actually use their skills faster if you put them down and then retreat, use their skill and then retreat them, right? You can actually use their skills more often when you do that. So this one's actually very simple. He actually uses his um, Silver Ash skill a few times to clear some units, you know, clear, clear the drones when the drone part's flying by. And then at some point, he, um, I think after he uses it for a third time, he retreats his Silver Ash. He uses it for the Junkman again. And then he retreats the Silver Ash and puts them down right before these heavy units spawn. And then he uses his Silver Ash's skill again to take out these heavy units. And he actually puts like three units in front over here to like heal and tank and all that stuff. So this, this strategy will require a relatively uh, high level healing tank as well and, and another range guard i think at this this spot to do some damage i think midnight or lapland will will work very well i think frostleaf can probably do it too if she's at e2 and then he puts silver ash down um, over here again facing down you know for another wave and then he uses it one last time for the la last heavy unit and then he stacks a whole bunch of melee to fight this last boss at the very, very end of the stage. And this is super clutch. This this drone almost almost slipped by as well. So definitely have some strong snipers. If your snipers aren't strong, uh, these drones can slip by very, very fast. These drones are so tanky. It's crazy. And this, this range guard um, is also doing a lot of damage to this drone. So it's also very important to have a range guard as well. Just look at this. Oh man, that was that was that was very close. And that's basically it for the uh, Silver Ash um, solo carry strategy. Now the third one is um, an AO one, and this one isn't as good as the other two. And he also has a few like um, six stars, but I think the six stars that he's using is very replaceable because like he's not even using Siege's second skill, so this could literally be any Vanguard. And I think Hoshi could be used with any tank, especially if you have a tank at E two. It could probably be any tank. And Shining, I think, is very, very a very replaceable six star. It could probably be any um, any any healer. It probably would, would, would work. And what he's doing is he's he's using an Aya. And this is the this is using Aya to carry. Um, Aya can only carry the last part of the fight. So in the beginning, you will need a relatively strong team. Um, and you also need a a, a um, you can also, you don't have to use Platinum here, you can actually use a, 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 your AoE Sniper in this slot. It basically does the same job. Um, he's just using Platinum because Pla Platinum has the exact same range as an AoE Sniper. So if you just put Shirayuki here, it could also work. And then the slot behind, you can you don't have to use an AoE Sniper, you can use a single target Sniper. And basically the beginning part of the fight is the same up until the part with the heavy unit spawn. And then he, um, he'll he retreat his Jessica, put AF facing up to deal with the heavy, ar heavy armored units. And then he retreats his AF. And later on for the, um, for the last wave, he actually, for the last heavy unit, he actually places his AF facing down over here and then uses Volcano to clear it. And then the last boss, they basically uh, just, he just keeps stacking units until the, the last boss is dead. 
and uh, this one's also relatively clutch. So I think it's much easier using Ifrit and Silrash than, than it is using Aya. Um, but I think Aya with Volcano, if you t if you get your timings right, can definitely can definitely carry the stage as well. So yeah, that's that's actually just a few strategies I wanted to show you. Um, there's definitely more strategies to clear Annihilation, um, clear Annihilation three, but you'll see that in all these videos they have similarities, and I think the similar units that they all use is um, they always have a push unit. A push unit is very very important at the bottom to push the you know the the junkman off into that hole and your push unit needs to be at e1 because you need to use skill 2 because you're pushing heavy units and you need that skill at rank 7 to push the heavy units okay so um i don't know if it needs to exactly be at 7 maybe it, it works at 6 but i mean it's just raising your skills like there's no reason not to get it to 7 right <laughs> um so the and the second thing you you also need is you'll need your um, snipers to be relatively high level. I don't want to have stuff slip by when I'm like running this on auto, so I definitely want to have like two. And even when you're manually, you can still have stuff slip by because if your snipers aren't strong enough. So um, I don't want those like super clutch situations happening. So definitely, definitely have like. E2 snipers if you don't want to be like you know clenching your butt cheeks every single time like a, a drones flying by right and your the your um your AOE sniper I would um I would recommend you get to E2 mainly for the purpose of having that extra range right hmm and the the other uh, probably the next thing is is then your your AOE guard or your your range guard. Um, this is also a must as well. You'll see them use a range guard at pretty much every single team. Um, you'll need a single target healer and an AOE healer. It's used in every single team. You have to have a vanguard to regenerate DP, and you have to have two tanks. Right? You just have to have two tanks. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a healing tank, but if you're using like the Silver Ash strategy, it has to be a healing tank. Um, and then this an AoE mage is optional in this level and you don't have to have a magic damage dealing guard it could be another two block guard it could be a, another one block guard it could um, this is very this slot's very very replaceable it could be pretty much any guard in this 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 spot and it would probably work so in terms of which units you should like level first and in like priority of E2s, in my opinion, I would probably say the AoE Sniper first, because the, with the AoE Sniper being at E2, um, they'll be able to clear the front units a lot easier. They'll actually get extended range to hit the you know the, the top and bottom. So your AoE Sniper being at E2 is probably the highest priority of E2, if I were to give anyone a priority. Um, the second highest priority would be one of your single target snipers having one of your single target snipers at e2 will be pretty important um, this is mainly so drones don't slip by and there's also situations you'll see in this video as well where you're placing the um, sniper in the front and they're taking damage from the crossbows and also when the mages move they also hit hit um, hit them as well so they they also they do take quite a bit of damage in in the front and i think um probably don't want to have any weird situations where the crossbow and the mages both hit you and then your your guy just dies um, I think certain certain snipers depending on the amount of HP that they have um, actually can't tank this slot at at e1 so having your one of your single target snipers at e2 is pretty important After your second single target sniper, I think the third priority would probably go to your range guard. And this is also to help deal with the drones as well. Um, and depending on the strategy, if you're using the, the Silver Ash strategy to help you basically kill one of the top heavy guys. Um, if you're using, if you're using, like if you're using Midnight, you can't get him to E2. But if you're using like Frostleaf or Lapland, um, then 
definitely have them at E2. If you're using Silver Silver Ash, you definitely should um, have him at E2 for his sil true Silver Slash. Uh, if not, then I guess you know Midnight also works. Then after after Midnight, um, I think the rest the rest don't really matter too much. I think the rest can definitely be all be at E1, and it wouldn't matter too much. If I were to give another priority to another unit, it would probably be your second sniper, just for the. Just in case, like, you know, the top side, the drone slips by. Because you, you saw that situation where, like, crews almost let one drone slip by, right? And, it like, I I really don't want that to happen. But I think if you, you're you using both Shirayuki and crews, and your Shirayuki's at E2, um, she should have, like, slightly higher damage, which will help deal with the drones. So if one of your sni other sniper is at E1, um, it shouldn't matter too much. So I, I think I think if you have, like, three E2s, like, two... Two of your snipers at E2, um, one of your AOE sniper, one single target sniper, and then one of your range guards, if you're using like Lapland or Frostleaf at E2, it should be, it should definitely work. And then this this slot is optional. If you're using Jatano carry, then probably have Jatano at E2. If you're using, um, you know, Ifrit carry, then Ifrit works at E1, you don't have to use Ifrit at E2. If you're using Silver Ash carry, you'll have to have Silver Ash at E2. If you're using Aya carry, then you'll also need to have Aya at E2. Um, and that's basically it. That is the pretty much the exact strategy for... Um, well, not the exact strategy, but kind of the, the um, exact preparations that you'll need to make for Annihilation 3 uh, before it comes out. And I think I, I highly recommend you start working on the units you need for Annihilation Three. If you're if you're like a lot of your units aren't at E two, um, because it's coming out very very soon. I think it's at the time of recording, it should be out probably in a week or so, and possibly in less than a week. Uh, it could be this week. It could be next week. So this is gonna be this is gonna be very rough. Like this stage is 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 pretty rough. <laughs> the stage is, is like I'm not gonna lie. The stage is it's like it's it's actually quite rough, um, which is why I made a second video talking about it just to kind of help some people if they really don't know um, what they should do to get ready for for it. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm I'm gonna make a video one of how to actually clear the stage, like the step by step video once the stage actually does come out. So be sure to subscribe to catch that. Uh, but besides that, that is it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.